Hello and welcome back to Virtual Mac Users Channel. On this channel, you find the latest news around Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365, Intune, Nerdio, and much, much more. In today's video, we're going to cover Windows Defender for Endpoint. We're going to show you how to deploy it via Windows 365, Azure Virtual Desktop, and then we'll go into the onboarded script, the configuration script, and walk you through some of the simple steps within the console and the advantages that you can get from Defender for Endpoint as well. So. If you're not familiar for what Defender for Endpoint is, the Premier Microsoft Security Solution that you can get. So people sometimes get a bit confused between Defender um, and Defender for Endpoint. So there's a few different versions. So you get the basic Defender client built into every single Windows client. Okay, so if you just deploy a basic Windows 365 device or a Azure Virtual Desktop or even a home PC, you'll get the Defender client. So that gives you very sort of simple um, standard antivirus or, or spyware protection okay and um, then you can do simple things like uh, configure exclusions and stuff so it's a really basic solution there's no really central management to it um, and then you get defender for endpoint for business so that's meant for smaller kind of smb devices but most enterprises use defender for endpoint now there's two plans to it there's plan one and plan two and they basically vary in price and obviously feature set. In today's video, I'll show you Defender for Endpoint Plan 2 because that's what I use in my dev environment. Um, but as a company, you may use kind of P1 or P2. Um, but as I mentioned, some companies don't even use Defender for Endpoint and they'll just use a standard Defender client. Um, and then they may use a third party solution on top of that as well. But it's certainly becoming more and more common where customers will prefer to use the native inbuilt security tuning um, rather than go for a third party client. So they'll use like Defender for Endpoint as a sort of central management configuration point to give advanced protection, reporting capabilities and self-healing. Looking forward to today's video. Hopefully you'll learn more about Defender for Endpoint. So the first thing we want to do is we want to basically enable the Intune integration um, with Defender for Endpoint, right? Um, and what that's going to allow, that's basically going to allow um, any in-chain registered devices to automatically register Defender for Endpoint. You need to make sure you have enough licenses, but we can also restrict it by group membership, which will show you how to do shortly. So let's go over to my desktop. Basically, all I've done here, I'm in the security portal, right? This is where we configure all the Defender for Endpoint configuration settings. First place we're going to go is we're down to the settings at the bottom here. That's going to take us to this screen. And here we're going to select endpoints. This is where we're going to configure the, the endpoint configuration for Defender for Endpoint. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to take us to the advanced features screen. So this is where we're going to configure the Intune integration. If we scroll to the bottom, we're going to find a setting to enable. I've already enabled this because it takes like 24 hours to sync. So I didn't want to wait for the sake of the video. This was set to off and all I've done is flick that to on. As long as you've got this on, it means we've got a connection between Defender for Endpoint and, and Intune. That gives us the ability to register the Intune devices with Defender for Endpoint. It's probably the, the best way to do it, right? Because it's complete hands off. We don't need to do anything. Um, everything will automatically happen um, in the background. And now that we've got that link, the next thing that we need to do, uh, we basically need to go away and create a configuration policy, um, which will apply the Defender for Endpoint configuration settings uh, to my Intune devices based on group membership. Let's go and do that. Now we're going to configure the endpoint security settings within Intune itself. So I've flicked over to the Intune port, intune.microsoft.com. If we go to the endpoint security screen, you can see we've got a couple of devices. The first place I'm going to is set up Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, right? So if I just click on there, and these are some configuration settings that we can configure. So most importantly, allow Microsoft Defender Endpoint to, to enforce endpoint security configuration. So basically, we're going to apply the configuration onto the devices. We can set that to on, um, and we can see the synchronization status is set to enabled as well. I'm not going to manage any Android or iOS devices, but if you wanted to, you could do. And then basically, we've got these settings just here as well as like number of days uh, before it becomes unresponsive. So we set that to seven. Okay, so. That's some basic configuration we can figure here as well. Right. So the next place I'm going to go to is the endpoint detection and response. This is where um, I've created a policy. We can see here uh, we've got defender for endpoint connection status. So this is the connection that we just created by Intune and set to enabled. Uh, I just created this test policy earlier, right? Um, so um, this test policy, all it's doing is basically Anything which is in this group, which I've created, so Cloud PC devices, will automatically get these configuration settings, okay? 
and we can see that's working because I can see this report here. So this is a, a Windows 365 device that I've built and you can see that I've logged onto this device and it's saying it's applied the configuration settings correctly. Okay. So let's go through and quickly create another policy to see what that looks like. So we're going to go select, it's going to be Windows endpoint detection and response policy. Okay. So we're going to click create. So name, so we're going to go like, I like tests, YouTube, testing. Okay. So easy. Testing. And then we're going to select next. And then we're going to select the configuration package, right? So that's the configuration package that we want to push down um, onto the settings. So we want to select auto from connector, right? Uh, because we want this to, to automatically sync up. So we're going to select auto from connector. Sample share, we're not going to configure that. Uh, we're not going to select anything here as well. Okay, so this is the only thing uh, that we need to apply. We're going to select next. We're not going to set any scope tags and assignment. So if you wanted to limit it by a certain group of devices, then this is where you'd select. By default, it would select everything, right? But maybe you want to do it in a bit more of a controlled manner about which devices that you want to onboard. So here we can just select a group. So we can put like tests devices in here so cloud pc test for example and then we can select next and review and create and save so that's that's all all we need to do for that as well so let's now check to see what devices are onboarded so we can see here we've now got one device onboarded so that's going to be the windows 3c device that i that i built okay and um, because we configured that the group to basically say anything which is registered within g and anything which is basically a part of that group, push down the Defender for Endpoint onboarding package onto that device and then register it. So if we just go into all devices, so this is my Windows 365 device that we've got here. This is the one that I built earlier, and this is the one that's in Defender for Endpoint. So if we go to Endpoint Security. Um, so now we're in the Defender for Endpoint Security screen. And we can see here we've got CPC devices. This is the Windows 365 device that I built. You can see it's newly discovered. So if I just click on there, we can go in there. And we can see basically here's what we're looking at. Is looking at scans. We can do security threats. We can see what software is installed. So it really gives you a, a ton of information to to go and really do deep dive into your security. Okay. All right. So just a quick summary. So what we've done, we've basically linked defender for endpoint with Inchi, right and um, we've created an ad group we've added the windows 365 device into that ad group um, and then we've uh, basically created a policy and uh, to point the onboarding package um, at any device as part of that ad group and then from there we've, we've been able to automatically onboard the windows 365 device into defender for endpoint right really really simple okay that that was all done within within a few clicks so now we've done that, let's have a look and see how we can do the same thing for Azure Virtual Desktop Session Hosts. Now, if you would register in your session host with Intune, we can use exactly the same method that we've done here, right? But not all people registered their session host with Intune. Um, so we'll look at using the onboarding script uh, to see how we can do that. All right, so let's go and do that now, shall we? All right, so we're back in the Defender for Endpoint um, security support up. So we're just going to head back over there. So. We are in the endpoints menu, okay? And then if we go to device management and then and onboarding, then we'll have a few options. So obviously we want Windows 10 and 11. So if you're doing Windows Server operating systems, obviously you select the relevant one here. So we're going to do Windows 10 and 11 because it's Windows 10 and 11 multi-session. We're going to onboard the devices using a script, right? So local script for up to 10 devices. You can also do this five group policy as well, uh, by the way. So if you go to deploy method group policy, and that'll show you which settings to configure. But uh, just to show you what's happening under the background, and then um, I'm going to show you the, the local script. And then we're basically going to download that onboarding package. Okay, so just going to select that, download onboarding package. And that's actually gone ahead and downloaded that. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to log on to the session host, and then we're going to run that onboarding package on the session host. Now, obviously, you can use whatever method you want to run that. You can use Nerdio. You can use as your DevOps, you can use group policy, you can task schedule as whatever you want to do. The important thing is we just run this partial script and running this partial script will essentially uh, get the device registered within the Defender Endpoint portal. 
and then it'll apply all the configuration settings onto that. Okay, so let's go and do that now. Okay, I'm logged on to the session host. So now we're actually going to go and run that onboarding scripts. Okay, so let's head over there now. All right, so so this is the, the script which is downloaded onto the session host. So you can see here, it's basically going through and setting a few settings and running through all the onboarding stuff. Okay, so as I mentioned, if you wanted to, you can put this in, like, in a logon share or you can put it on a, any share which is accessible by the session host and run this via group policy, DevOps, near you, whenever you want. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and run this, shall we? So I've copied it into this directory here. So we're just going to run this. So I'm running under a uh, administrator prompt. Okay. So I'm going to do Windows Defender onboarding script.cmd. Let's mention what this is going to do. This is basically going to go and configure all these configuration settings that you've got in the script. And then hopefully we'll see it pop up in the Defender endpoint console. So I'm just logged on as a local admin on the multi-session session host. Okay. All right, let's go. Okay, so put script on body thing. We're going to go back. Yeah, okay, we're good. Yes, to confirm. Okay. Okay, so we're done. So that's reported successfully. So it's, it's created the service, it's configured the service, and it started the service. So let's just press OK to continue. Okay, so now what we should see, we should that, see that VM pop up in the Defender Endpoint portal. So let's have a look, shall we? Okay, so we're now in the Defender Endpoint portal. And as you can see, we now have my device. So this is this device here that we just onboarded. So we can see it's here. So obviously it's not done a full scan yet, so it doesn't have all of his information. But yeah, that was pretty pretty quick and easy, right? So obviously that'll take a bit of time for it to come through. So we can see here, kind of first seen 18th of January, uh, 10 54 am which is just a few minutes ago and that's now been onboarded into the defender for, for endpoint portal so now this machine will be obviously fully fully protected by defender for endpoint so we can go in here obviously we can't see much data here but if we go to some of the other devices so if i click on my windows 3 5 device i'm going to here you'll be able to see lots of data come through so this is the really cool information that you can see defender for endpoint you can see like exactly what's going on into insane amounts of detail so it really does do a good job of, of protecting the devices but we can also go and look at like security recommendations as well and i think this is the most useful feature because it's really telling us what we need to do to make sure we're as protected as we can be because a lot of the reasons why people deploy sort of azure virtual desktop or windows 365 is security reasons so obviously you want those devices to be as uh, secure um, as they possibly can be. Um, so using this method, we can basically just make sure we keep on track of that. So uh, maybe I'll do another video in the future where we can basically go through and go through some of these settings uh, and then go through and lock it down and make sure we're getting um, the most secure settings as possible. So let's just see if we've actually got any recommendations yet. No, we've not. Well, we'll need to wait probably um, a few hours or a day or so uh, for those recommendations to, to come through. All right, so how easy was that right um and that wasn't difficult at all so is that that's how easy it can be to kind of onboard and you protect your devices um it's a defender for endpoint um it's something if you've got a license for it i'd definitely recommend um because it just gives you that extra layer of protection and as as you just saw it's very easy to configure now obviously we've touched the very 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 basics here there's a lot of extra configuration and stuff that you can do to sort of lock it down even further or apply exclusions and that kind of things yeah i hope you've enjoyed today's video i hope you've learned something yeah please subscribe like and i'll see you next week for next next video thanks bye